Here you can see my twin turbo Nissan VQ engine with these crazy manifolds that we ran last year for the anti-lag. They're tubular, they're stainless, and they actually move the turbo up into a position that is behind the engine because last year the theory was to put the turbos up and back where they're accessible and also to have the heat stay towards the rear of the engine instead of to run exhaust manifolds towards the front, hang the turbos out front, and then run down pipes back around the back again. So we ended up with this design, which worked pretty well. However, there was a couple flaws that I saw in it. We actually cracked a manifold, I would say, because of all the leverage that you're getting with hanging it up in this far back. And also uh, accessibility to the wastegate was actually an issue because the turbo sits right over here and the firewall is right about here. And so now we're just dealing with one more mechanical part on the car that we can't access very quickly and easily in case there's a failure. So for this year, we're actually gonna be doing a different turbo system. And I'm actually gonna be working with the guys that helped me out with my first twin turbo 370Z, the guys over Fast Intentions. And those bros just sent me out this fresh box with some brand new manifolds in it. So we're going to open those up and I'm gonna show you guys the difference from a stainless manifold to a cast manifold. And now some people think that cast manifolds are a cheap way out. They're not really for a race car, but the nice part about these manifolds is that they have short runners. They flow very well. It's a tubular design that is casted. It's not just a log manifold. And so now you have a very durable product. It's very close in orientation. It keeps the turbo tucked nice and low right in this area, actually, instead of up and back. So we get the weight nice and low, we keep the heat down and back, and so we don't have issues with all of our coolant setup that was all up here before having so much heat just generated up in this area. We have fuel lines running back here, we had the water lines running back here, and we had just fire sleeve on everything just to try and protect it. So we're gonna try and do a different setup, and today what I'm gonna be doing is test fitting these brand new manifolds onto the engine to see how they fit with our dry sump system. Because the big issue that I am worried about, so to speak, is this has, this VQ has a dry sump from Daily. It is actually a very nice piece. It's all billet and it's machined in to the actual pan. Uh, I mean, it bolts in, but it's machined to it. So it's a direct fit is what I'm getting at. So there's no bracket, there's no place to move it without completely re-engineering the dry sum system. So I'll be actually the first person to mount these um, manifolds and these uh, this twin turbo kit to a VQ with the daily dry sum setup. So we're gonna pull these manifolds off and get those turbos hung. And on that note, the turbo that arrived for it is the brand new Garrett G-Line Turbo. But it's plastic. <laughs> so, so we can't use this turbo, but it's a 3D print of the actual turbo that we will be getting. So an all new design, new exhaust housing, new compressor housing, new center cartridge, everything about it is brand new. But this is the model because they are still casting the real pieces right now. And so I have to wait for those to arrive, but uh, Garrett was nice enough to send me out their 3D print model for display and for measuring and testing so that I can hang it on the side of the car, or the engine, not the car, hang it off the side of the engine here and check my clearances. And we could even use that to start doing some mock-up in the engine bay once the car comes back from paint. So let's uh, get to it. notice is this manifold's a lot smaller, a lot more condensed, and just gives us more room to work in the engine room. It keeps the heat nice and low, away from the valve covers, away from the firewall, and mounts the turbo nice and low as well so that we have the weight of the car as low as possible. Low center of gravity is better for drifting. It puts the waste gate back around the corner by the transmission so we can access it from the top side. No problem. It's not underneath the turbo, it's above it now. And Everything just looks great. These manifolds from Fast and 10 just come thermal coated. Uh, like I said, I run the same ones on my twin turbo demo car with absolutely no problems. That is one of my favorite cars to drive. You guys have seen it in NOS proximity. Thing spools and runs like a champ. So I wanted to apply those same pieces to the race car.
just to give you guys a little bit of a perspective, let's lay these two out next to each other. I'm just gonna have to swing this thing off real quick. Just hand tightened on, no big deal. Wanted to do a nice little side-by-side -side comparison on these guys. So yes, the old stainless manifold does have the waste kit on there, so don't mind the uppipe. But you can see the difference in the size and shape. Much more condensed, more compact. Should work very, very well. Very excited for the new setup. And going back to the turbo, we did a quick test fit. I'll sling it back on there so you guys can see, but clears the dry sump pan very, very well. So very excited about that um, because this was a bit of a question for me on if the fast intentions kit was gonna work and it shows that it does. So now we can get back to building. This will be a little tricky for me to do with one hand, but I'm gonna give her a try. Just gonna show you guys what I'm talking about with the clearance on the dry cell. So there's the turbo, fitted nicely, tucked down right in the valley. We got room for a motor mount. We'll have to get creative with it, but there is room for it. And also you can see there's room for the turbo and the dry sump system. The lines are the same thing, be all nice and tight. We'll heat sleeve everything, keep it safe. The previous lines are all heat sleeve for the same reasons, but in the end, Everything fits with enough clearance to make it work. Um, Dylan and I will have to get creative on the motor mount. Nothing we haven't done in the past. Just nice to see that these three major components, the manifold, the turbo, and the dry sump, all clear with plenty of room. There's nothing too tight. We don't have to modify anything heavily. Just gotta get a little creative on the motor mount, which is just a bunch of steel, no big deal. Um, Dylan's favorite, so I'm cutting and welding. Mine too, but his is prettier, so we'll have him probably lay the final beads on it. And the uh, dry sump lines, which are flexible. We have an infinite number of combinations of fittings, angles, hose diameters, and all that. Um, so we can you know, route that around the turbo, no problem. Some people think that you have to have a stainless manifold. I don't agree with that. I run cast manifolds on a couple of my cars. I have run um, you know, stainless manifolds, of course. Uh, I'm gonna try and do this one-handed here, but um, what I was going to say was the reason why I went with this is because I run the same setup on my twin turbo demo car with the Fast Intentions Bros and have zero issues. That thing spools up super quick. I love it. Um, you can see this manifold is, is better than most cast manifolds. It's not a log design. It's not like a Schedule 40 welded together, um, you know, just a bunch of elbows. It has a tubular flow design. They all merge right here to the collector, a 30 series style V-band setup. So real quick and easy to work on. Waste gates down around the back. Very durable, very strong. You're never gonna crack this thing. And that's why I went with it because I don't have any issues. No more failures, right? So uh, another ounce or two, which actually I wouldn't even be surprised if it weighs the same as that other manifold because it is so compact. So I'll actually get a, a scale out and weigh them because I'm curious on that one. But either way, this is the setup we're gonna run. Turbo clears, it fits, it rolls. I've had success with this in the past, so why change what isn't broken?